To have this many people, I saw on television this morning, five o'clock in the morning, people were lining up. This is crazy, crazy. Well, I want to thank everybody. I know Fresno very well. You know that, right? Because I came here probably 10 or 12 years ago, and they had a problem. Do you remember the problem, right? They had a problem. I think it was running horse, right? Running horse. And I was going to take it over and do a beautiful job. Fortunately, I didn't do it because there's no water anymore because they send all the water out to the ocean, right? I got lucky that I didn't do it, but I would have changed the water. I would have worked it out. Don't worry. But you know, so it was interesting. And some of the radio guys, one in particular who's here, where are you? Where are you up the river? He was so great. Where is that guy? Where is he? He was so great to me. I'll tell you, he was so good I almost did the project. That would have been terrible, right? But good, thank you. But we had great support, great community support. There were a couple of politicians who were against it. A couple of politicians didn't like me. They said I wasn't a nice person. And that thing is just sitting there. That, and you know, no, you, you don't want to go wild, because I do that a lot. You go in, if they want you, love you, and everything else. I didn't do it, and I made a fortune by not doing it. Good? I mean, everyone, you know, some of the best deals are the deals you don't do. You understand that. And we're going to solve your water problem. You have a water problem that is so insane. It is so ridiculous. Where they're taking the water and shoving it out to sea. And I just met with a lot of the farmers who are great people. And they're saying, we don't even understand it. They don't understand. Nobody understands it. And I've heard this from other friends of mine in California where they have farms up here and they don't get water. I said, oh, that's too bad. Is it a drought? No, we have plenty of water. I said, what's wrong? Well, we shove it out to sea. And I said, why? And nobody even knows why. And the environmentalists don't know why. Now they're trying to protect a certain kind of three inch fish. But, huh? no, no, think of it. So nobody even knows why. And by the way, the environmentalists don't know why. And, and, you know, I should say this. I've received many, many environmental rewards. Uh, you know, really, rewards and awards. I have done very well environmentally, and I'm all for it. But you have some people that really want to just get in the way. And I don't know if it's for their ego or what. But there are so many things. And, you know, we want jobs. We have to bring jobs back. And if we can bring this part of the world water that we have that we have but it's true I've, I've gotten so many of the awards and and I'm proud of them but and there are some great environmentalists and some great environmental people and they really do you know my environmental standard is very simple and I've said it to everybody I want clean air and I want clean water that's what I want clean air clean water very, very simple. So anyway, so we're going to be back up here. If I win, believe me, we're going to start opening up the, the water so that you can have your farmers survive, so that your job market will get better. No, but there are some things that are inconceivable that, you know, they happen and you wonder why. And I'm asking everybody why, why, why? And nobody can really explain why they do this, uh, but they do it. And your senators are for it, but they're totally ineffective, unfortunately. They're ineffective. You know, they're for it. By the way, they're for it for you. And then to the other side, they're for it for them. And then you wonder, I wonder why nothing happens. But when you're with the senators, they want you. And then they go over to the environmental side and they want them. And then you say, gee, that's strange. They're for me. We want the water. But the environmentalists just endorse them. I wonder why. Well, I'll tell you how it works, folks. So they play both sides of it. But they're actually not for you. So we'll see what happens. But we're going to get it done. We're going to get it done quick. Don't even think about it. That's an easy one. Don't even think about it. So yesterday was a big day. You know, yesterday, right? We're going to bring it back, folks. We're going to bring this country back. 
You know what it is? Look at all those red hats, white hats, the black hats. The gun shooting hats, they do pretty well, I'll tell you. Speaking of that, the NRA last week endorsed Donald Trump in the earliest endorsement they've ever given. The earliest they've ever given. That was a great honor. And Wayne and Chris and all the guys, these are great people. These are great Americans. These are people that want to see great things for the country. You know, they try and build them like a, sort of a radical agenda. It's not a radical agenda. It's called the Second Amendment, folks. Now, Hillary... Hillary Clinton wants to abolish the Second Amendment. Remember that. She wants to abolish it. And it's disgraceful. You know, I watched her on television, and it's really hard for me to watch her, because honestly, it's very boring. You know, it's very boring. But I watched her last night, and she lies so much. She lies so much. And she was saying last night so many things. Donald Trump wants to see Japan get nuclear weapons. I never said that. Donald Trump wants to see Germany get nuclear weapons. He wants to see South Korea arm themselves and get nuclear weapons. I, I didn't say that. I never even said close to that. Donald Trump loves North Korea. He loves the maniac that's running North Korea. I love him. Donald Trump is a friend of Putin. Well, actually, Putin did call me a genius, and he said, I'm the future of the Republican Party. So he's off to a good start. I will say, I will say he's off to a good start. Right, folks? And by the way, I'm not a friend of Putin. I don't know Putin. I've never met Putin. I respect Putin. He's a strong leader, I can tell you that. Unlike what we have, we have a pathetic leader. Pathetic. We don't even have a leader, you know, the word leader. You go leader in quotes, right? But we don't even have a leader. But, you know, wouldn't it be nice if we actually could get along with Russia? Wouldn't that be nice? I mean, you know. We've spent almost five trillion dollars in the Middle East. And we're in worse shape today in the Middle East than we were 15 years ago. If these presidents would have gone away on vacation and not done anything, we'd be in better shape than we are today, if you think about it, right? And I was against the war in Iraq, totally against the war in Iraq, totally against it. And, you know, Hillary raised her hand and, hey, look, it happened. It was a disaster. It's one of the worst things this country's ever done. Obama got us out very badly. He said a date. We are going to be out by a certain date. The other side didn't believe it. The other side couldn't believe it. In fact, they thought it was like, you know, misinformation, they call it. So they weren't totally prepared. Then he left on that date. I think General Douglas MacArthur, General George Patton, they're spinning in their graves, in their graves. When they see, when they see what's happening with our country, when this great country can't beat ISIS, which is essentially 30,000 people, vicious people, smart people, but when they see that we can't beat them and, you know, we're fighting not to win, we fight not to win, and we want to be, we, we now fight wars in a politically correct manner. We got to get out of there. We got to win. We got to get out of there. We got to win. We got to build up our military bigger, better, stronger than ever before. Bigger, better, stronger. You know, in a certain way, it's the cheapest thing we can do. It's the cheapest thing we can do because look at what's going on. Everyone's laughing at us. And we send our allies over there, you know, they're fighting Syria. We don't even know who we're sending. We send information, we send, we send armaments and military and rifles, and we send them so much stuff. And a friend of mine has a son, he's been over in Iraq for a long time, numerous terms, and he's, he's been there for a long time. And he's a good boy, he's a great guy. And he's a great American kid. And I love talking to him, although it's very depressing. He said the most depressing thing, is when we're fighting and we see what's coming on the other side and they have newer equipment than we have. They take the Humvees, you know, they shoot a bullet in the air. The guys that we give it, our so-called allies, they run. They run for the hills. And ISIS or whoever comes in and takes the equipment, their brand new equipment. And this guy who's great and just such a, I mean, he loves this country, but he finds it so sad. He said, we deliver equipment to our allies. 
There's a skirmish. The Allies run away, drop the equipment they run, and the enemy comes and takes our equipment. And they end up with armor-plated Humvees. You know, they sold 2,300 Humvees. I think of it, 2,300. I thought it was a misprint. 2,000, all armor-plated. And we have our guys driving around in things where they lose their legs, they lose their arms. You know, it's really a sad thing. And it's not going to happen anymore, folks, okay? It's not going to happen anymore. Not going to happen. But I watched Hillary Clinton, as I say, crooked Hillary. She is crooked. But she lies. She lies so much. And you know, it's sad. She lies so much. But I can't really use that term because I've already used that term. I don't like to use a term twice. I don't like to use a term twice. I don't like to use a term twice. But but she lies so much. And she's saying all these things like, you know, uh, uh, like I respect the kid from Korea. I mean, can you imagine this? I respect that I have total respect and like him very much. Look, Hillary is a disaster, folks. She has bad judgment. That was said by Bernie Sanders. He's given me a lot of my best lines. I mean, he has given me such great lines on her. And you know, if I say it, they're going to say, that's not a nice thing to say. So I always refer to Bernie Sanders because, you know, and we do get much bigger crowds than him. We get much bigger crowds. And I want to debate him so badly. I'd love to debate Bernie. But, you know, people say, first of all, I said, give 10 million, 15 million to women's health issues. We'll pick the charities. And the networks want to keep the money themselves. That's one thing. So that's a problem. Then the second thing is, we got the nomination yesterday, right? So we have the nomination. So we're number one. And it was tough, but we won by such big margins because it's a rigged process, let me tell you. I mean, very rarely could a guy like me come in and just win. We won so much. You know, I tell the prize fighters, right? They say, no, Mr. Trump, we don't worry about a decision because if we knock them out, we don't have to worry about decisions, okay? That's what we did. We won by such big margins that we had knockouts and we got the nomination. And by the way, do you notice? It wasn't supposed to have been gotten till July. And then some of these pundits, who are among the most dishonest people in the world, by the way, they said, we don't think it's going to even happen in Cleveland in July. We think it's going to take another convention. Can you believe that? Would that be a mess? And I said, I don't know what you're talking about. We're going to win on the first ballot. And it actually happened even sooner. Because remember, Indiana, we won New York, right? We won Pennsylvania. Big. All of them big. We won, and these are all landslides, so I won't have to use the word too often. We won massive in New York. We won massive in Pennsylvania, in Maryland, in Connecticut, in Delaware, in Rhode Island. And then they had the answer because they had Indiana. But Indiana liked me better than it liked them by a lot. And we went to Indiana and won in a massive landslide. And we won with the evangelicals, and we won with the women, thank you. You know, you know, we're breaking records in the polls with men. I love you too, see? They're all screaming, women love you. That's, I love women. But believe me, I love women. I love women. And you know what else? I have great respect for women, believe me. Great respect for women. But I won with women, I won with men. Now with men, I'm setting records. That's why I'm leading. The men, the men, are, I'm setting polling records. They've never seen numbers like this. The men like Trump. I'd rather have the women like Trump. The hell with the men. I don't care about the men, I want the women. Now, we're setting records with the men, and we're doing fine. We're going up, up, up with the women. And let me tell you, you know, one of the things with this Bernie, I wanted it to go to women's, a lot of money, but the, the networks are very greedy, and they're making a fortune off this whole election. I don't know if you've seen the numbers with CNN and Fox and MS, all of them. They're through the roof. They're making a fortune because of me. Because honestly, nobody else, who the hell are they going to watch? I can't use any of the people that are vanquished because I'm trying to get along with them all now.
I have to be a good Republican and love everybody that I've beaten. So I won't use them. But do you think they're going to watch Hillary and Bernie? Let me tell you, the debates for, as Variety magazine and Hollywood Reporter, they call it the Trump debate. They didn't do it for any reason. They said the Trump debate drew record numbers. So the Trump debate. Now, let's say I wasn't in the group. I, I'm not saying this braggingly, folks. I don't want to get into that. But let's say I wasn't in. They had the highest number in the history of cable television, 24 million people. Now, if I wasn't in, they would have had, what, three people? Okay. But I don't say that. I refuse to say it. Three weeks later, CNN had a debate, and they had 23 million people, more than that. The highest number in the history of CNN. And then debates did great all the way along. I mean, they did great. Now, the Democrats had debates, too, and they did fine, but they were much, much lower. And you ever notice that even though Hillary's caught in another scandal, you know, the, the inspector general, who's a Democrat, did a big, big number on her. I don't know how she can continue to run. I'll be honest with you. How does she continue to run? How does she continue? It could be I'll have to debate because you know what? You don't want if you're in first place, you don't want to really debate a guy who's in second place. But it could be I'll end up with Bernie. But I hear what they're going to do. They don't want Bernie. Because, look, he's a socialist. I mean, give me a break. Yeah. Have we come that far? Have we come that far? I don't think so. Look, he's a socialist. So what they're going to do, I hear, if she doesn't make it because of things somewhat beyond her control, although personally I think she's being totally protected because they would have done it by now. But this inspector general report was a real doozy. This was a bad report. This was page after page. And, you know, it goes back to judgment. It goes back to competence. She's not competent. If you look, she's essentially not competent. It goes to her judgment. It goes to her level of competence. And she's not competent. And it's always been this way. She's always skirted on the edge, whether it's white water or whether it's all of these things uh, going into. Uh, how about Benghazi? But look at look at. And you know what? And I say this and I, I say it because Benghazi to me was a horrific situation. But for whatever reason, the mainstream media, because they're trying to protect her, they never picked it up. Fox picked it up more than anybody, in all fairness. But they never picked it up. And a lot of people don't know so much about Benghazi, Benghazi like they should know. But her decision to go in, and this was her baby, Libya, was a disaster. And she got rid of Gaddafi. And now you have a mess. And you know who has the oil? Who has the oil in Libya? ISIS has the oil. So you know what we got out of it? We got death, we got destruction, we got ISIS rebuilding stronger than ever in Libya and having among the greatest, the, the level of quality of oil in Libya is among the best in the world. It's high up, it's extremely sweet, it's just phenomenal oil. ISIS has the oil. And then you'd say, if ISIS has the oil, why aren't we blockading so they can't sell it? Why aren't we bombing the hell out? We have, let me tell you, let me tell you, our Washington leadership, in particular, our president, is grossly incompetent. Just remember I said that. Grossly incompetent. So, so it's said. So we'll see what happens. But it looks like it's going to be Hillary. It should not be Hillary. What other people have been accused of is far less than what she's been accused of. I mean, by a tiny, you look at General Petraeus, you look at other people that have done a fraction of what she's done, and their lives are destroyed. Their lives are destroyed. So we'll see what happens. I just don't understand why it's not happening. You know, how long does it take? How long does it take? And, you know, it gets to a point. What do you do it? One day before she gets it or two weeks after she gets it? It's almost... We almost don't want that. We want to have it. If it's going to be done, let it be done. And if it's not going to be done, we're going after her verbally because what she did is so wrong. What she did is so wrong. But when I watched her speech last night, it was so sad because everything she said it was like a lie. I wonder, I wonder if I could start, instead of saying crooked Hillary, which is a very accurate description, I wonder if I could say, you know, remember Lion, Lion? I won't say Lion Ted, I refuse to say. 
Lion Ted. Holds that Bible high, puts it down, and then he lies. Lion Ted. Well, I'm going to retire that from Ted. I'm not going to call Ted that anymore. Not going to call him. But I wonder if I could redo it. Because after watching her last night with the lies that I love the leader of North Korea, the leader of North Korea. You know, I said, here's what I said. They asked me, somebody in some newspaper asked me, and, you know, just they're all bad. Because any, any answer you give, it's always like, you know, slanted negative, if you happen to be a conservative Republican. If you're a Democrat, especially if you're liberal, they'll take your answer and say, no, 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 you don't mean that. You've got to say it this way, this way. Then they'll correct your answer. So it's absolutely perfect, right? But if you're a conservative Republican, you know, they'll put one third of the answer in and then they'll write your own words. I tell you what, I've had, look at the New York Times story. Did you see the New York Times with me and the women? Front page of the New York Times, above the fold, Middle picture, me standing there with Miss Universe contestants. This was the, this was the National Enquirer. And then they did stories with certain women. You've seen what happened. It's like they're, they don't know what to do, the New York Times. They don't know what to do. I know that because we're talking to them. They are so embarrassed. So they put it, and then they talked about different women. One of them was named Roxanne, and one of them, another, I won't even go into it. But they all came, they said, that's not what we said. That's not what we meant. We think Mr. Trump is fantastic. One of them said he's a great man. One of them said he's a great man. I'm going to vote for him. I mean, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. And they all came out. And Rowan, Rowan was incredible because it's Rowan Brewer Lane, who's a wonderful person. But I figured, you know, it would be a story. It was a false story. I knew it was a false story. But I figured, you know, too bad. How do you fight it? Because they're dirty, rotten liars, these people, I'll tell you. They're the most dishonest people. They're dirty, rotten liars. And Rowan came out and she said, that's not it. And she got on CNN. In all fairness, I give a lot of credit to CNN and Fox. And I think MS, maybe they put her on, maybe they didn't. I don't know. Probably they didn't. Because they're like a pipe organ for the Times. But, but she got on a lot of television. And she wanted the record set straight. And she said the nicest things about me. And then they had another one. Then they had a construction person. Let me tell you about this person. So she didn't come out and say nice. She wrote a book that I'm fantastic. She wrote a book that I am a non-sexist person. I am non-sexist. Now, whoever even thinks of this, if you're talking about somebody, you don't say, think of it. You're writing about somebody. She worked for me. I gave her a job in charge of putting up a big building. Probably there's never been a woman, in all fairness, in charge of such a big project, certainly in New York. You know, it was way, way ahead of schedule. In fact, my father said, my father's from the old school. It's okay. It's okay to say this, right, women? And he said, don't put her in there. Don't put her. I said, Dad, I'm telling you, she's going to be fine. Don't put her in. I said, Pop, she's going to be fine. Besides that, it's my building. I can do what I want, okay? <laughs> Trump Tower. Now, I had the greatest father. I, he, he's the greatest teacher you could ever have. He was a great guy. He said, all right, look, if you want to do it. And now I think he was right because of this. She was fine. She did a job and got it done. And that was it. Then she left, went to another company and didn't. She hasn't had a good career after that. You know, she had a good career with me. She writes a book and she said nice things in the book. I didn't read it, but she said nice things. It was sent to me the other day. And, and one of the media sent it. In all fairness, the Daily Mail wrote a fantastic story about it because it's a scam. So then she said, now, the Times never called me about her. So I gave her a job that no other woman would have ever gotten. So I was way ahead, and I still am. I have so many women executives. I have women executives. I have women executives that are paid more than men executives for the same job. Now, you know what that means. Tomorrow I'll be sued by men. You get sued by everybody. You get sued by everybody. I guarantee I'll get a suit from the men in my company. We're not getting enough money. Okay. But I have a lot of women executives. I've been way ahead. They're fantastic, right? So she writes a book, and the book says he's not sexist. Now, you know, anybody that puts that in a statement, that I never even thought about it, that means they're into that. You know, they're into trouble. So she writes he's not sexist. Okay. Wants to come back. Writes me emails, letters, emails, many, many, many. I have no interest in taking her back. I have no interest. I, you know, it wasn't for me. But I had no interest. It wasn't worth it. And then one of my men came in and said, oh, that's Barbara. 
She's the most foul-mouthed human being I've ever said. We had to bring her into my office years ago and say, you got to clean up your language. She'd go into a group of men and start cursing and using the F word and the most foul-mouthed person. We had to tell her, don't do it. Okay. So now she ends up in the New York Times. I say, oh, that's good. I'm glad because she's got to say nice things, wrote nice books, said great things about me in the book. And she gets on and says, well, he's not good. He's not good. He's this. He's that. And he said to me, don't have that piece of candy. <laughs> and I would never want to say she was heavy or not heavy. I would never do a thing like that. <laughs> but he said to me, don't have that. And I actually had friends, look, they're watching this whole game. They're saying with all of them, if that's the worst things you've done with women, I've got to tell you. You are in a class by yourself. And they went a lot further than that. In fact, some of them, some of them said, you have to be the nicest guy in the world. If that's the worst. This is a front page story by the failing New York Times above the fold with the biggest picture in, in beautiful colors and all these girls standing around. I owned it. I owned it. I sold it recently. Made a lot of money, by the way, which is good. I sold it. To IMG, great company, they're going to do a great job with it. But I sold it. And, and, and I sold it because television didn't want to give me the ads. Because they said, I want to stop illegal immigration. So television, Univision and, and NBC and all, they didn't want to give me the ads. Anyway, we settled it, worked out to be great. I'm very happy. Let's put it this way. In the history of beauty pageants, nobody ever made the money I made, I want to tell you. It was great. But, and, and I lost a lot. You know, by doing this, Macy's turned out to be a total traitor. Macy's said, head of Macy's calls me up, Donald, I'm very concerned. What? You know, I said, we got to stop illegal immigration. And I have, it's not a big deal, but I sell ties and shirts and stuff at Macy's, right? Big deal, who cares? A lot of them were made in China, so I didn't care anyway, to be honest with you. Because you have no choice. They don't make things in here anymore. They make it in other countries. They don't make them here. So I called up and he goes, he goes, Donald, I'm very concerned. I'll never forget, I was making a speech. I was in New Hampshire. I was getting ready, and they're introducing me. And I'm starting to do well, because as you know, I won New Hampshire. I'm getting ready to go up and make a speech. I'm standing like here on the stairs. And a nice guy's introducing me. There's over a 1,000 people, which is a small crowd now. A 1,000 people is now a small. But in New Hampshire, they have small venues. This was in somebody's backyard. The place was packed. And I'm getting ready, and the man's saying, and Donald Trump is the personification of the American dream. Ay, ay, ay. So he's saying all the different things. And I get a call and I see it's the head of Macy's. Nice guy, actually, Terry Lundgren. And I say, oh, well, I'll do this quick. Hey, Terry, what's going on? And he was a friend of mine. Haven't spoken to him since. I won't talk to him. He goes, Donald, I'm so concerned. What? I hear that they're going to picket Macy's. Who? Some people we don't know. Donald, could I announce that we're dropping your line? I said, drop my line for what? Let them have a picket for a half hour. Then they're going to want to go to lunch. You have it all the time. No, no, they're going to pick it. He was so, so afraid. I said, Terry, I'm going up to make a speech. No, no, please, please don't get off the phone. Please, could we talk about it? And I'm saying to myself, can you believe this guy? And this was a friend of mine. I said, Terry, let him. No, no, please talk. In the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donald Trump. And I'm on the phone. I can't get this guy off the phone. I said, can I call you back later? Yes, but could I do that? I said, just do, do whatever you want to do. I don't care. They canceled my ties and shirts, and they were doing well. They canceled my ties and shirts at Macy's. So, you know, when I do, a very disloyal, honestly, very, if we ought to boycott Macy's, I'll tell you what happened. I'll tell you what happened. Because of that, thousands of people that are customers at Macy's cut up their credit cards and sent them in. Thousands of people. Because it showed a couple of things. Number one, it showed no loyalty to a friend. I was a friend of the guy. Well, I don't have to play golf with him anymore. That's okay. But I was a friend of the guy. But it shows that people aren't willing to take on the tough issues. Illegal immigration is a tremendous issue. A big issue. Oh, that's okay. Oh, uh, thank you so much. You have such a beautiful voice. All right, get him out. Get him out.
Get him out of here. So what it really shows, hey, by the way, do we love our police? Our police? We love our police. You gotta let them know. Because our police are not treated fairly. I will tell you that. All right, thank you very much. That's good. She had a very meek, mild voice. Usually you're better off just letting her shout. It's my people that cause the problem. They start screaming, look over here, over here. And you can't even hear the person, right? That's all right. Well, it's good because then the cameras go around. You know, the cameras never take the camera off me. The only way they take the camera off me, the only way is when there's a protester. So I love my protesters. I love my protesters. So when I ran, I gave up a lot. I gave up The Apprentice. You know, they wanted to sign me for a lot of shows. And I gave up The Apprentice. And now we put in Arnold Schwarzenegger. I have the show. But we put in Arnold. We'll see how he does. Who the hell knows? But I gave up the shirts and ties. I gave up a lot of things. And I gave up a lot of deals. But I want to do this because we are going to make our country so great again. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. And what it showed to Macy's, what it showed to me, really, was great disloyalty to the country because it's an issue that has to be discussed and people understand. And it's become probably the number one issue. And if I weren't running, you wouldn't even be talking about it right now. And then you have the killing of Kate and the killing of Jamil and so many other killings and so much crime going on. And it's the number one. And by the way, we will build a wall and the wall will be paid. We'll build the wall. All right, you ready? Are you ready? And who is going to pay for that wall? Mexico. Mexico, 100%. 100%. Did you see Vincente Fox uh, a couple of weeks ago? He was on CNN. And they asked him, and we're making progress, because two years ago he said, we will never allow a wall. Now he said, we will never pay for the wall. He doesn't talk about allowing it. So... But he said two weeks or three weeks ago, and he was very nice. He actually apologized to me, which is nice. Most people don't do that. But Vincente Fox, he was the president of Mexico not so long ago. And he was being interviewed. And he said, we will not pay for that. And then he gave the F-bomb wall. And I said, oh, this is going to blow up. There's going to be a disaster. I feel so badly for the guy. Nobody even talked about it. Can you imagine if I said that? If I said that. I get the electric chair. He said it, you know, past president. Nobody even talked about it. I will not and we will not build that F-bomb wall. I said, oh, the poor guy. He shouldn't have said that. It's terrible. Nobody picked it up. Nobody cared. Right? I do it. It's, I'm telling you, it may be they will demand that the death penalty be brought back. Okay? If I do it. So... But he was very nice, and, and he, does, he just doesn't understand that this is going to happen. And as you know, the Border Patrol agents, 16,500 last week, they endorsed Donald Trump. First time they've ever endorsed. First time. And Sheriff Joe, we love Sheriff Joe. Sheriff Joe Arpaio, he knows a little bit about borders. He knows a little bit. You know what, I, I have to tell this story, because... I deal with strong people, weak people. I deal with everybody. Smart people, dumb people. I deal with everybody. So I'm in Arizona, and we have this massive crowd, and the roads are blocked. And there were certain law enforcement, and I love law enforcement guys, but there were certain guys, they wanted to be very politically correct. They didn't want to do anything about it. And Sheriff Joe was there. And he comes over, he says, what's the problem? Now, they chained themselves to their cars on a highway. And there was only one highway in. And we had 20,000 people. We had, it was massive. And it was all blocked up. And these people were, you know, calling names to other enforcement agencies and, you know, cursing at them and everything. And Joe heard about it. He went, what? What? He didn't even understand. What? And Sheriff Joe, Joe Arpaio from that area, he goes up. We love Sheriff Joe. Wait, you got to hear this. Song. 
He goes over there. No guns, no nothing. He's standing there. They know who he is. What are you doing? <laughs> Sheriff, we're changing the car. We're not going to move. You got 30 seconds to unchange yourself. Now, in the meantime, there are about 400 people. Of the 400, there are only about three or four chained to the car. The 400 people all ran. They dispersed. The four people, they had, and by the way, he had behind him a couple of guys with chain cutters, right? The jaws, they call. Boom, 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 to jail. Cars were moved, they were thrown apart. They were, it, it took, it took, and, and I'm not saying this to build him up. He's a friend of mine, he's a great guy. And, and he and your former governor, Jan, and so many people, they're friends of mine, they're great people, they endorsed me early. Sheriff Joe Arpaio endorsed me early. But I got to watch what respect is. I got to watch it. Here we are, we have a road that's being held up for a long time. Thousands and thousands of people that want to come see a rally are being horribly treated. I mean, they're sitting in their car, their cars are turned off, you couldn't get through the highway. And other people didn't want to do anything. They're probably afraid to be sued. And I understand that. You know, today a policeman talks, if you talk the wrong way to somebody, you end up going to jail for the rest of your life. You know, but seriously, they take away your pension. They fire you from the force. Joe looked at him and says, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'll never forget. A couple of guys standing behind him. And they were only standing there with the cutters. And he said, what are you doing? Everybody left. With other people, they were standing there chanting, chanting, chanting. Cut them up. I think we took three or four people to jail. They were put in jail. And that was the end of it. They moved the cars. They pushed the cars out of the way. It took like five minutes. It was so beautiful to watch. It's called respect. It's called respect. And we had a rally of 25,000 people at least. And there wasn't one protest. And I don't mind protests. I mean, when that young woman screamed, I couldn't hear her too much. But could only hear my people saying, there she is. I want to get my people to shut up every once in a while. Just leave it. But we had, you know, I always say a Trump rally is the safest place. First of all, do we have fun at Trump rallies? Do we have fun? Right? Do we have fun? You know, it's the safest place on earth. It's the safest place on earth. We have more safety. It's all, you know, we were in Costa Mesa in California. 31,000 people in this incredible dome, this amphitheater. And it was a love fest. But they had people outside burning the American flag. I don't know and waving flags from other countries, okay? I'll be nice. They're waving flags, burning. That was the one where they started stomping on the police car. It was very famous. And the whole story, they probably had 150. The whole story was about that. They showed a couple of helicopter shots. And I had people whose children were killed, whose families were killed, whose relatives were killed by illegal immigrants. So we had them on the stage with me. It was an unbelievable evening, an unbelievable success. But 90% of the coverage was this guy stomping on a policeman's car. By the way, if that was Sheriff Joe, he wouldn't be stomping. I guarantee He wouldn't be stomping on Sheriff Joe's car. I can tell you that much right now. That'd be a long, long-term prison sentence for that guy. That guy did some major destruction. Then he almost broke his ass when he got off. Did you see that? <laughs> he tried to pretend. He tried to pretend it didn't hurt. Oh, he was in pain. He took a heavy fall. He'll probably now sue the police because the car was too slippery on the hood, right? So we're doing really well. And one of the things that I will tell you, so we got the, I think, I think we have a real shot. One of the things we're going to do, because Hillary is terrible. She's terrible as a candidate. And, and Bernie, assuming it's Bernie, and remember this, I think, and I'm pretty good with this stuff, you know, when I was a business person, I got along with everybody, all sides. I got along with everybody. It was my job. I got along with Democrats, Republicans, Hillary, Bill. I get along with everybody. I do what you, we do what we have to do, folks. And I'll tell you what, if you look at what's going on and if you look at what we see, just take a look at what's going on around you. We don't make good deals anymore. We're like the dummies of the world. We have the worst trade deals ever done. NAFTA was signed by Bill Clinton, right? Designed by Bill Clinton. NAFTA has single-handedly destroyed much of the economic viability of our country. They've moved to Mexico. They've moved all over the place. It's, a, it's, it's one of the saddest things. When I won all these states, and I'm from New York, so I understood Syracuse and Rome, New York, the real Rome, and, and Albany and uh, out on Long Island. 
And I'd look at these factories that have been absolutely abandoned and left to die. And you could see 20, 25 years ago, they were vibrant places, but now they're just dead. You could buy them for $2. Actually, I'll give you a good clip. If I win, what I would do is before I win, go buy all those empty factories all over the place. I'm telling you. You'll buy them for 37 cents. Because if I win, those factories will be vibrant again and you will have made a killing in the real estate market, okay? It's a good idea. And if I don't win, you will have wasted a couple of bucks. So it's not so bad. I really mean it. I tell you what, I really mean it. I might have a conflict of interest, but I saw some, I said, man, I'd like to buy that thing. I'll bet I could buy that for nothing. Most of them are crumbling. You know, the bricks are all rotted out. They're crumbling, falling down. But they're all over Syracuse and, and all over Long Island and all over Pennsylvania. And then you have Hillary Clinton in West Virginia. And she says, we will put the coal miners out of work. We will put the coal miners out of business. We will end the, the mines. We will put the mines out of business, right? We will put the coal miners out of business. Coal miners, why, why would you want to put the coal miners out of business? It takes guts to be a coal miner. I personally, I love the coal miners. You saw how I did with West Virginia. I don't have the guts to be a coal miner. That's a tough job. I actually said to them, I said, fellas, because I got such support. I won with massive numbers in West Virginia. And I won in Kentucky, big area. People don't even realize. I won Kentucky. I won in Pennsylvania with massive numbers. Uh, they, I mean, these are incredible people. And I had a group of 20 of them in front of me. We had a crowd that was so big. I think we had 40,000 people. We had this incredible arena that was packed. And they had 20,000 people outside. We put the loudspeakers outside in West Virginia. The people are looking for help. They're looking for hope. They're looking for something. They're having nothing. They're having nothing. The EPA is destroying coal. And you know, coal is an incredible fuel. This is something that built, we built our country with coal. And you know who uses coal? China uses coal. We can't use it. I mean, they're making it impossible. And now they want to put everything else out of business. And yet a wind turbine that kills all the bald eagles all, all over, okay, you know, I mean, that's okay with them, right? Even though it needs subsidy. But there's a place for everything. I know a lot about solar. I love solar, except there's a problem with it. Got a lot of problems with it. One problem is it's so expensive. They give me a 30-year 30, 30 payback. Oh, that's great. Let me buy something. I'll get my money back over a 30-year period. I mean, you got to make it so it works. Solar, uh, the concept of solar is good, but it has a problem. You know, when the sun isn't shining, you also need some, like, juice. You need a little electricity. I have a friend, he said, he's really into it. I said, I said, so how are you doing? He said, you know, I built an all solar house, but I have a problem. I have three months in the year where the sun isn't enough and I can't live. I have no electricity. I said, what do you do? I bought a big, ugly generator and I fill it up with gasoline and it spews fumes. But he needs help. Another friend of mine, I tell you these two. Isn't it great when you don't use teleprompters where you read the same speech every time. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Isn't that great? And this has to do, all this stuff has to do with leadership because our country's going wrong. So I have a friend. He went into an all lead. You know what lead is? All lead building. Some people call it all lead building. But they call it all lead. And it's highly rated. And he's a very substantial guy, very wealthy guy, has a tremendous, has a lot of office space. And he said, Donald, I'm so proud. And he wants to be, you know, he wants to give back to the country. That's why I'm doing this. I want to give back. That's why I'm doing this. Am I doing a good job? We just won the nomination. So, so he's a good guy, but he's a tough guy. Tough, smart, very rich. And he took many floors of an office building. And this building is rated like very high. In other words, environmentally unbelievable, right? And he said, Donald, I feel so good. I've just signed a lease with an old lead building. And he said, I feel so good about it. I say, which building? That one. I say, well, congratulations. I said, by the way, do you like, how's your vision? He goes, what does that have to do with it? I said, how is your vision? He said, my vision is good. I said, in three years it won't be because you won't have enough light to see. He said, what do you mean? Then I said, do you mind being freezing in the winter and hot as hell in the summer? Of course I do. I said, you will freeze your ass off in the winter. And in the summer, you will be a disaster. What do you mean? He said, Donald, look, I'm very proud of what I've done. He called me up the other day. He said, it's the dumbest thing he's ever done. He said, 
It was a warm day. He said, it's like 85 degrees in my office. I said, of course. They don't give you enough juice. They don't give, I, I can do that too. Just don't give enough electric. I'm going to be environmentally friendly, but everyone's going to sweat to death. And he said, you know, and you were right about another thing. I don't have enough light. So I took lights and they're operated by batteries and I put them on my desk so I can see. So, you know, you, because when he said, I just moved into an old lead building, I said, oh, that's too bad. He didn't know what I was talking about. So look, folks, we got to be smart. It's just like what's coming over the border. We have people coming over the border. We don't know who they are. We don't know where they come from. They come from Syria. They come from the migration. But they're coming all over the place. They're putting them in your community. And we've had some big problems. You know, you take a look at Paris, 130 people dead, hundreds of people still in the hospital. Their lives are, many of the lives are destroyed so badly. And by the way, speaking of that, speaking of that, if in Paris or if in San Bernardino with the, these young radicals, radical Islamic terrorism, problem. We have a problem. We have a problem. We have a president who is so incompetent, he won't even mention the words. And there's nothing wrong with mentioning the words. We got to solve it. If you're not going to address the problem, if you're not going to talk about the problem, then you're never going to solve it. So radical Islamic terrorism, right? We have a problem. And we're going to solve the problem. But they have to report. They have to report the bad ones. You see, there's like a very close bond. Not working so well. But like the San Bernardino people, everyone knew they were up to bad stuff. They had bombs all over their floor. That's not exactly normal. If I go to your floor, these three beautiful young ladies in front, do you have any bombs on your floor? And you know what? If you did, I'd report you. I would say, I would call up the local sheriff who I just met. Where's the woman? She's a fantastic. Where is she? The sheriff! So, sheriff, I would call you. And I'd call the chief. Where's the chief? The chief was great. All those stars. And I'd call the chief. But I'd call up and I'd say, Sheriff, I have a person here. I mean, I don't know much about him. But honestly, there's bombs all over their floor. Do you think that would be helpful, Sheriff? Right? But people don't report them, right? They see what's going on. And not going to happen, folks. They got to report. Because we can solve a lot of the problems. When they look for the thug, you know, the press used to call them mastermind. The mastermind. The mastermind. And then we wonder why our kids are so attracted to joining ISIS over the Internet. They're using the Internet better than we do. And you have to talk about that. Because why are we allowing them to get to our kids like this? Our kids are going over there. These kids don't even know what they're doing. And they're going over to fight for ISIS. Because a lot of things. But the press is calling the leader the mastermind. I call him the guy with the dirty, filthy cap. All dirty, disgusting. Right? All dirty. The mastermind. But they haven't been doing it so much lately. They haven't been doing it. But we have, to solve, we have to stop this stuff. We have to be smart. We have to be vigilant. And they have to report. And you know what? They have to report. The guy, the mastermind that they called him, the guy with the cap, the guy that they've been looking for for months. You know where he was living? Right next door to his apartment. In the same location. Right next door to his apartment. And everybody in the community, religious people, they all knew he was there. And yet it took, what, nine months? Almost a year to find him. And they found him only by mistake. He wasn't reported. So they all knew he was there. He was living in the community. He was the number one wanted person in the world. And he was living right next to where he lived. The same people. And they were protecting him. And he had just killed 130 people and hundreds of people in the hospital. So when that goes on, that's no good, folks. You got to report. You got to report. When you see trouble, you got to report. And if you don't report, we can't handle it. If you don't report, we can't handle it. I'll just finish up a couple of things because it's like current events. It's like a current event class. This, I like this better than my normal speech, right? Because you've already heard a lot of this stuff. But yesterday, our president uh, said Donald Trump has foreign countries rattled. <laughs> Great. Great. That's so great. And he said, rattled. Now, look, here's the thing. We protect, 
We spend billions and billions and actually trillions and trillions. We owe 19 trillion. But we spend billions and hundreds of billions of dollars protecting other countries. And that's all fine. That's all fine. We protect Japan. Nobody knows that. We protect Germany. Nobody knows that. We protect Saudi Arabia. Do you know how much money Saudi Arabia makes? They wouldn't be there for two minutes if we ever said we're leaving. So they got to pay, right? Guy said, they got to pay for it. They got to pay. So one of the biggest diplomats of the country, who's a friend of mine, you saw recently, I actually met with him and it was all over the place, so you could figure it out. And he said, Donald, I thought you were wrong in your approach. I thought it was too tough. But you know what? All of those countries are calling me. What do we do? What do we do? How can we make him happy? What can we do? If he wins, what can we do? Respect us. Who said that? Oh, man, what a great, what a great line that is. This guy had the best line of the morning. I, I'm very embarrassed. That's good. Oh, am I allowed to use that or will you sue me if I use it? That's great. No, that's an amazing. I said, what can we do? What can we do? He shouts out, respect us. That's really it. We want to be respected. We don't want to be the dummies anymore. We don't want to be the dummies. So, so I'm with this man, and he said they're all calling. And he knows all the nations. He's highly respected. He's a great guy. Great guy. And he said they want to know. We want to get along. We want to get along. They take such advantage of our president. It's so sad to see what's happening. They take such advantage. And Hillary, they... I mean, give me a break. You know, we talk about presidential. Do I look presidential? Do you think, honestly, 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 do you think Hillary looks presidential in office? I don't think so. And I'm not going to say it because I'm not allowed to say it because I want to be politically correct. So I refuse to say that I cannot stand her screaming into the microphone all the time. It's, uh... Actually, that's why I turned it off last night. It wasn't that she was lying about me at every single corner. I just couldn't stand it. I got such a headache. Oh, please. No, but I won't say it because we're not allowed to say that, right? Talking to these women in front, is that right? Was I good in not saying it? Yes. All right, look. So, so Obama gets on television. First of all, he's not supposed to be talking when he's in Japan about politics in our nation. Okay, he's not supposed to. I think I got him rattled. He's the one that's rattled. You want to know the truth? I remember when I was looking to run, when I was looking to run four years ago, and I guess I'm glad I didn't do it because I think this is going to be great. And maybe we needed four more years of incompetence to, you know, to get us there. Okay, maybe we did. But I was looking, you remember, I was leading in the polls. I was doing great in the polls. I never announced I was running. And boy, did Romney let us down. Man, did he choke. Boy, did he choke. He was like he couldn't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Boy, did he choke. He was a choking dog. So, because that was an election that should have been won. Now, in all fairness, he had, he had the worst campaign manager in the history of campaigns. I watch this guy on television all the time. And he's constantly talking about, uh, yes, I don't like Donald Trump's attitude. There's a guy who took an election that was a guaranteed win, and he lost it. I don't even think it was Romney so much. Do you know his name? Anybody know his name? Huh? Should I bring it up? Yeah, the hell with it. He had the worst campaign manager. I'll give you a hint. Stewart. Okay. The worst campaign manager that I think I've ever seen. Because I was there. I said, listen, I don't believe what's going on with the polls. You got to get out there. You got to get on television. You got to. And for like a month and a half, he was like a lost soul. He didn't do anything. And say what you want about Obama. He was on Jay Leno at the time. He was on all the different shows. He was on Letterman. He was all over the place. I said, you better start getting on television. You're going you're gonna to lose. And he took an election that should have been won. And he lost. And I backed John McCain. But I don't, I don't, you know, I think 
I think for him to have won would have been very tough because he had a little thing like, you know, a lot of bad things were happening for the Republicans. So I don't blame I backed him. And what happened is I backed McCain. I backed Romney. I backed Romney big. And this time I said, we're going to do it ourselves, folks. We're going to just go. We're going to win. Okay? We're going to win. We're going to win. And, and when I hear... And when I hear the word rattle, to me, that's a perfect. You know, when you're negotiating, has anybody read The Art of the Deal? When you're negotiating, because we have to negotiate. We have horrible trade deals. China, and I'm, I love China. China's great. I have a lot of friends in China, very smart people. I've made a lot of money dealing with China. The Bank of America building through China. Uh, 1290 of the Americas. I sell a lot of condos. The biggest bank in the world from China is, is one of my tenants, right? Pay me a lot of rent. And we don't have to worry about the rent either. They're good for it, I can tell you. What they do to us with the devaluation of their currency, what they do to our businesses, where they make all our product and everything else. And you look at South Korea, you look at all these countries, they're all taking advantage of us. They all think we're stupid people. They all think we're like Obama. They all think we're stupid people. Let me tell you, we have the greatest business people in the world. We have business people that don't fail. We have business people that are so much better than the Chinese negotiators. And we're going to use those people. And we're going to make great trade deals. And we're going to bring our jobs back. And we're going to have great relationships with China. And with Mexico. And with Japan. Look at Japan. They send in millions of cars. You know what we give them? Beef. And they don't even want it. They send it back goes back and forth. No, no, send it back. After about four trips, they call it Kobe. You know, that's aged. It ages for about six. It's true. And they sell it for about 15 times more money. It's not a bad deal. But look, look, we've got to be smart. Oh, he's on our side. That's okay. No, no, he's on our side. He's on our side. <laughs> so here's the story, folks. Here's the story. Here's the story. Why didn't you do it a little earlier, you dope? Okay, folks, you want to wait? All right, let's get him out of here. So, folks, so here's the story. No other Republican, you know, we won by landslides, we won big. And by the way, who would have thought, you know, they were saying Trump will be in this race for a long time. Maybe he can eke it out at the end. The end. I've been watching. I want to get into action. I'm getting a little bored. That's why I'm here. I'm doing these speeches. I don't even have to be doing them. What the hell am I doing? Somebody said, why are you doing a speech in Fresno? And now I'm going to San Diego. And why are you doing a speech in San Diego? You won the nomination. You don't have to do any speeches for a while. I said, you know why? Because I promised the people I was going to come and make a speech. That's all. That's all. Now, I, with that being said, we, because it's we, this is a movement. You know, we're on the cover of Time magazine all the time. We're, I've never been on the cover of Time magazine so much. I think it was two times in like 35 years, and it's four or five times in the last five months. That means politics is more important than real estate, right? But, but look, here's the story. In the history, this is the thing I'm most proud of. In the history of the Republican Party, now you're talking about Dwight D. Eisenhower. You're talking about Richard Nixon. You're talking about Ronald Reagan. You're talking, I like him. I like him too. You're talking about Reagan. You're talking about all of these people. In the history of the Republican Party, Nobody has ever gotten as much votes in the primaries that I have, right? by far. And what's the big secret? And, and we have 10 states to go. And there's one other thing. I've been competing against 16 other people, right? Hillary said the other night, I have a f more votes than Donald. You know, she has one guy she's competing with. And he's a socialist. She's got one guy. I got governors. I got all these different people. I have governors and senators, respected people. Ben Carson, who endorsed me, is a great guy. But I have respected people. And if I had one, two, or three, 
I would have broken the record for Democrats and Republicans, and I think I still think I can. I think now we've broken the. Look, here's what I'm saying: in two weeks, you got to vote. Go out and vote in the primary. Just do it. Just do it. Okay. As you know, I got the nomination anyway, but don't waste it. Let's knock a record because the bigger vote we get, the more of a mandate it is. It's a mandate. What we have is a mandate, and that's why we're on the cover of all the magazines. And it's it's we. I'm the messenger. I have done a really good job as a messenger, but I'm the messenger. It's we. It's a, it's a whole thing. In fact, Time Magazine has one great picture where I'm standing like this and they have this big crowd in front of me and it's a picture from the top. And I was happy because it didn't show a bald spot, so I was happy as hell. Cold. I combed that hair just... Psh, I was so happy. I don't know. Maybe they did a air airbrushing. Who knows? I doubt it. I doubt it. But, no, but they have all these incredible... All these incredible, uh, you know, stories. They're incredible stories. And basically, I told you, Bill O'Reilly said, and Bill O'Reilly's a tough cook. In fact, watch his show tonight. He's doing a special on Trump. Can you believe it? No, it's going to be a big show. But, but it's called The Best of Trump. I don't know if that's good or bad. But Bill O'Reilly said two weeks ago, he said, I mean, here's a guy, he's a tough guy, smart guy. He said, in his history, in his lifetime, he has never seen a more important political event than what's happened with Donald Trump. That's a big statement. That's a big statement. And a lot of the event is you. I mean, look at it. It's 11 o'clock on a Friday morning and we have all these thousands of people. I mean, it's you. And, and you know, when we go out on weekends, we have 35, 40,000 people happening. And it's beautiful. And it's a love fest. And it's sort of easy to do and it's fun to do. Here's the thing. So get out and vote in a couple of weeks and get out and vote because here's what I'm going to do. And I'll tell you this right now. And I shouldn't say it because although Hillary's got bigger problems right now, but we are going to make a strong play for California. I, I, maybe I can't do it. Maybe I can't do it. No, no, maybe I can't do it. Maybe I can't do it. Now the smart money would say that a Republican cannot win California. But when I go to Costa Mesa, when I just left 50 or 60 farmers in the back and they can't get water, and I say, how tough is it? How bad is the drought? There is no drought. They turn the water out into the ocean. And I said, I've been hearing it. And I spent a half an hour with them. It's hard to believe. But listen, we're going to win the election. So I want to make a big play for California. Should I? I think so. Now, I'll say this, I'll say this. No other Republican, let's say Ted Cruz won, or let's say any one of them won, they wouldn't even come here for dinner because they are told that as a Republican, you have zero chance, okay? I really believe we're going to win it. I think we have a real chance to win it. And you know what? I view it strategically also. Because if we don't win it, they are going to spend one hell of a fortune in fighting me off. That I can tell you. Money that could have been spent someplace else. Right? Right? But I think we can win it. We have a great group. Tim and all of his people. We have amazing people. So I just want to say to this group, you're the first one. I am going to make a heavy, heavy, heavy play because I honestly think that we're getting these massive crowds all over the place. I actually think we're going to win California. Plus, I have property here. I have employees here. So we're going to make, we're going to make a big thing. I'm just laughing. I did this last night at another place. Here are my notes. See? Isn't that better than a teleprompter? Isn't that better? One of the things I have here, two of the things I have here. TSA, did you ever see a more disgusting situation than what's going on at your airports? We'll straighten that out. And the other thing I have here, remember this. You know, they talk about, oh, third party, all these stupid people like Bill Crystal. He's a guy's like a moron. We are going to find a third party. He's been saying that like for three years. We are going to, he's the one that wanted to go into Iraq. We have to attack Iraq, Iraq, Iraq. Only problem is they never knocked down the World Trade Center or somebody else, right? So listen, listen. These are stupid people. Because remember this. And he's, I think they've given up now pretty much, except the Libertarian Party is nothing. But listen, listen. If we win, the most important thing we have, other than our national security, 
even more important than the economy in a sense, is the appointment of Supreme Court judges. If Hillary wins, our country will never be the same for a lot of reasons. The military will be weak, the borders will be Swiss cheese. If we win, if we win, we are going to have phenomenal Supreme Court justices. And I put out a list of 11 and I've gotten A plus reviews. And we're going to protect our Second Amendment 100%. She's going to abolish it. She is going to abolish it. Remember that. We're going to protect our Second Amendment. But here's the story, folks. We don't win anymore, but we're going to start winning again. We're going to win with our military, and we are going to knock the hell out of ISIS. We're going to win big on trade, and we're going to still have great relationships, but we're going to win big. We're going to bring our jobs back. We're going to bring money back. We're going to save your Social Security. We're going to cut your taxes because the middle class and business are being destroyed with taxes. So we're cutting your taxes more than any other candidate by far. We're cutting your taxes, and we're simplifying your taxes so you don't have to go and spend all that money to get people that take half of your money away in order because it's so complicated. So we're going to cut your taxes, remember. We're going to save you Social Security and Medicare. We are going to do a great job at our border. We're going to create a country again. We're going to have a country again. We're going to repeal and replace Obamacare with something great. We're going to get rid of Common Core and bring your education locally, which will be phenomenal. And we're going to start winning again. We're going to win with everything. We're going to win with military and trade and health care. We're going to win with education. We're going to win so much, and I do this because I have fun doing this, to be honest. And you've seen it before. And we're going to build that wall. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And people are going to come through that wall, but they're going to come through. Just remember, they're going to come through legally. I want to say that. I have to say that. We want people to come into the country, but they have to come in legally. So here's the story. We're going to win. We're going to win. We're going to keep winning. We're going to win so much that you people are going to say, let's have a protest at the White House. We're winning too much. We can't stand it anymore because we're not used to winning. We can't take it anymore. Mr. President, please, we don't want to win so much. And I'm going to say, I'm sorry. We're going to keep winning, winning, winning. And we are going to make America great again.